everyone, it's Kat from Kat's Creations again. I want to welcome you to my home and to my kitchen. And today we're going live with how to make an Easter wreath. And I want to thank those of you that voted whether or not we we're doing Valentine's Day or Easter. So today we're doing an Easter wreath and I'm going to walk you through all the steps. I'm going to try to do some time savers so you guys can go back and watch the replay if you need additional help. I have my husband who's going to be fielding all my questions and telling me if people join. And I have my tech daughter who's going to be pinning things or adding to the comments so that people will have the answers to the questions during the replay. Um, so first of all, I want to remind those of you, because this is what happened during my last Facebook Live, is I had a lot of people thinking they were watching the Facebook Live and they were actually watching a replay and they were getting really upset because Facebook has this weird system where you, if you're watching the video, you can actually type a comment and it'll actually stick it right into the video exactly as if you were watching the video. So to tell the difference between your live or replay, if right now you're seeing the upper left hand corner has a bright red um, tag that says live, you are watching it live so I can address all your questions. Without the live there, you're watching a replay. But Please feel free to leave the comments. I will answer all the questions that you guys post. If you need additional information, let me know. So, um, first off, I want to, another thank you goes out to Lauren Simmons from Beautiful um, Mesh Reese, who was kind enough during our last video to share my live video on her page. And really, it helped boost my Facebook um, followers, my Facebook likes. And it really generated an awful lot of views on the live videos. So please, guys, when you're watching this, share like crazy. Because that's how we can spread the word about what we do. So, anyone live? Anyone on? Just Kaylee and Isaiah. Okay. So, building our wreath. What we're going to be doing today is we're using a 14-inch wire frame wreath from the dollar store. Um... I had a really great tip from Nick Credicos at Nick's Seasonal Decor who said that you can purchase these online through the online store um, and order them by the case. So you get 24 wreaths by the case and if you go to Dollar Tree's right now you won't find these but you can go to their online store and look for the four, four gram wire wreath and you can buy a case of them for a dollar, um, a dollar per wreath so it's $24 and go pick it up at your local Dollar Tree store when it comes in. Karen's on. Hi, Karen. Um, Isaiah's on? Yeah. Hi, Karen. Okay, so what we're doing is, I'm gonna show you really quickly, someone had asked me what the difference between a work frame wreath was in the last video and a standard wire frame. This is where you can save your money. A work frame wreath generally already has all your twist ties on, they're welded on, so it's really nice. Um, it's spaced out exactly as you need them. Um, this one does not, but you're going from a $9.99 wire wreath frame to a dollar wreath frame. So this is where you can save some money on the crafting side of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using 18 pipe cleaners. People call them Chanel stems. Some people call them fuzzy sticks. And what we're going to do is we're going to start on the inside of our wreath frame. And there's six sections on a 14 inch Dollar Tree wreath. So we're gonna take our pipe cleaner and we're gonna measure it up and we're just gonna twist it twice. You're doing the inner two, right? Uh, the inner two. So the, the far most inner and then the second one. So I'm gonna put that right in the middle of each one of the frames. So we will go all the way around. So I'm just trying to save you guys time. So once we go all the way around on the six, you're going to go to the outside so the third rung from the middle and then the very last one and you're going to kind of put them in between the other ones and then again kind of do it kind of tight and the only reason we do them every two is if you did them every single one they slide around the wreath frame too much so when you're trying to secure your mesh it's going to just rotate and slide around so i'm going to go ahead and add another one because this is what you would do and you can do it any way you want. You do all the inner rings and then do all the outer. I do it that way so I can figure out where I'm gonna be spacing um, my outer. 
So this is what each section should look like, a middle and two outer ones. So you have six on the inside and 12 on the outside. So a total of 18. Okay, I'll do one more on the inside so you guys can see how I'm doing it. Just like so. And then you're leaving it open so when we get ready to put our mesh in, it's easier. So when you finish, it should look like this. So there's my time saver for you guys watching. Okay? So six on the inside. And then as you guys can see, they're spaced opposite of every single one. Um, doing two on the outer and then two on the inner. Anyone join us? Uh, yes, it shows 14 right now, but uh, it doesn't show them on the bottom, so I need to find out who they are. Okay. Kaylee, do you have any comments? Do you guys have any questions so far before I move on? Any questions about the wreath frame, Chanel stems? You can get the Chanel stems at the Dollar Tree. You can get a bag of about 15 for a dollar. Um, but obviously that wouldn't be enough for you, but that's pretty good cost savings. Um, Michael's has a medium-sized bag, and then Hobby Lobby has a giant-sized bag of white. So you can use your 40% off or wait till those go on sale. So any questions? Nope, not yet. Kaylee? Chavez says we should put a white background so we can see. A white background so you can see? Yeah. We're doing it in stages. So um, starting in my kitchen for now, I'm going to have my husband kind of zoom in as we start to get to work on this. So hopefully you guys won't see all of this stuff behind me. There we go. Um, so we got Joanne <clears throat> George from South Carolina. Hi, Joanne. And we got Linda Johnson from Arizona. Hey, Linda. Okay, he's pulling them up. There's this huge delay between actually going live and when they post. So, okay, we've got our work frame wreath going. And um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using one, two, three, four. I have five different colors of mesh ribbon or the deco mesh. So they come in rolls like this, 10 inches wide. We're going to be cutting every single color that I show you to 12 inches. Tony from Indiana is on. Hi, Tony. So we're using pink. We're using green. I'm just gonna put these here for now and then I'll just move them off so you guys can see. We're using a beige um, poly jute mesh because I like the natural stuff now. Um, we're doing purple, blue, and yellow. So what we're gonna be doing is in each twist tie we're using one 10 inch, um, well it's 10 inches wide, Cut all these are cut to 12 inches. So one beige, and then we're going to alternate two of every color with the beige in the middle. So um, I already kind of pre-planned it out. So as you guys can see, um, you guys don't have to wait for me to sit here and cut all the mesh. I already done them. I kind of made sure all my color combinations um, didn't back up with the other ones. So and then this is from Arkansas, and then we have Shauna Porter from Fresno. Hi, Linda. Hi, Shauna. Do you guys have any questions before I start? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start doing this. Um, if you guys watched the firefighter wreath, what I did is I built a base of a um, beige um, poof method. This one, we're just going to do the ruffle technique, but we're doing three in each twist tie. So the first color combo that I did was green and then it's going beige, and then it's gonna go pink. And I'm just gonna do those exactly. And I'm just walking my fingers along the, the mesh, making little bow ties. I'm gonna hold this in my hand. And you have Pamela from Kentucky. Hi, Pamela. All the way from Kentucky, awesome. And Wendy from Ocala, Florida. Hey, Wendy, welcome from Florida. So I want the beige in the middle of every single one of my colors. So I'm just backing this up to where I have it. And then holding it in my hand. I'm trying to do this to where the rolled up side is flat because it's easier for me to grab rather than do the rolled up side facing up. So I'm just adding these together. So depending upon where you're getting your mesh, this could be a very inexpensive wreath for you to make. So I'm taking the three, 
I'm putting them face down in each one of my ties. So I'm gonna open that and I'm gonna start with the inner and go all the way around my six inner rings because it's easier for me to do it that way. And let me know if you guys need adjustments, zooms in, close-ups, go back and do that again. Um, blue and purple. And you said she's always wanted to learn the steps of making the wreath. Awesome. Okay, well hopefully this will help you. And you guys don't have to do these many colors. I just thought um, with the sign I have, can you see the sign in the video? Yep. This sign came from Jane's Front Door Decor. She sells the most incredible metal signs that I'm using a lot of in my wreaths. And this is one of the ones I ordered from her, ugh, I wanna say like the end of December, beginning of January. And I believe they're still available at her storefront. So Jane's Front Door Decor, she has an Etsy storefront. And um, I think Kaylee's, she's posting the link for you guys if you wanna order some signs from her. Then you have Teresa Chavez from Riverside, California. Hi, Teresa. Okay, so this one we're doing blue, beige, and purple. So I'm starting with the blue. I got my little bow tie. And I did this so I wouldn't get confused with all my mesh. And I'm just laying this up to the next one and just walking it back up. And then I'll add my purple. See how it rolls this way? I lay them this way so it's easier for me to catch them. Kind of find a middle point as best as you can and then just walk it through. It and starts to get really thick doing three. And you have Terry Conrad as well. Hi Terry. Terry, I've known Terry for a long time. She was, uh, she's on one of my Facebook groups with one of my Christian authors. Um, now we're doing, have these all laid out yellow and green. So you're doing just the inside right now? Just the inside. So I'm doing yellow, beige, and green. Just trying to, it's beige alternating every other color. Yeah. So I kind of <clears throat> laid them out the way I want to gather them. You have a Brenda from Oregon. Hi Brenda, love Oregon. And then Tony asks, is this for sale or for yourself? This will be for sale. So unless one of my kids confiscate it before but no it's there it's staying on on my Etsy site for now so this will be for sale for sale once we're all done so we're gonna add a lot of really cool elements to this one I was out shopping today uh, Lisa from Kentucky says she's making a wreath while watching you awesome what kind of wreath are you making Lisa waiting for the comment to catch up So now we're adding the next one, and I'm just going all the way around the loops. And there's a Bobette Lindstrom who said, missed my question, so let me go back and see. What question was it that we missed? I am looking. Do you have it, Kaylee? No? Can you ask that question again? Sometimes Facebook just has glitches in the live feeds. And then all of a sudden it'll show at the very end like we never even got that question. And I want to make sure that we're addressing all your questions. Lisa's making a Valentine's wreath. Valentine's Day. Awesome. I know. We did a poll because I like to know what you guys want to see me watch rather than, I don't know, me just telling you this is what we're making. So we had a choice between a Valentine's Day wreath and an Easter wreath. And 75% of the votes all want Easter. So we're doing Easter. So we did blue, beige, and pink in this one. And as you guys can see, it's gonna start to fill up really good. And I'm just twisting them in twice. And then I'm doing purple and yellow. Bobette, if you could ask that question again, that'd be great. Any other questions that you guys have? Because you guys will keep me busy while I'm just scrunching. I'm actually going to break this up because I think if I kind of go with my color scheme, I'm going to wind up with two green and pink on the same. So I'm going to break this up and move these closer to the green and pink ones. Any other questions, Steve? Uh, not yet. We're waiting for Bobette to ask that one question, but Lisa Ware from Cincinnati is watching. Hi, Lisa. 
Must be awful cold in Cincinnati. It was 73 degrees here in California. That's where we're from. Trisha Allen is online and she's also just asked, is this 10 inch ribbon? This 10 -inch is mesh? 10 inch deco mesh with cut to 12 inch pieces. Cause I wanted a little bit more fullness just doing a ruffle method alone. And then I'm doing green. And then now I'm back to green. So my color combinations that I went with, and I wrote them all down on posting notes so I would remember. Um, green, beige, and then pink. Blue, the beige, and then purple. Yellow, beige, and green. Pink, beige, and blue. And then purple, beige, and yellow. And then they just start over again. Anything else, babe? No. Okay. So I'm doing back to green, beige, and pink. And then this is the last one to the inners, and then we'll be doing the outer rings. So six inner rings on a 14 inch wire wreath frame that I ordered through Dollar Tree. And yes, you can order online because the last time I've seen the wire wreath frames at Dollar Tree was Halloween, I think. So now I'm dropping to the outer rings. Um, yes? Teresa Chavez says the reason why I said right background is because I can't tell if you tied more than one wire. Do you understand my question? If I tied more than one wire? Um, when you were doing the work frame. When I'm doing the work frame, I put just one, one wire um, on each of the six inner frames. And as soon as I finish this one, I'll show you again how I did it. Um, Cause I kind of threw this one out there and said, well, it's done, but I'll show you what I did. And then I'm just putting each one of these three 10 inch wide by 12 inch um, long. Um, and I'm just doing the ruffle or the bow tie technique. I forget what everyone calls them. I call them bow ties cause that's what they look like. And then I'm just dropping this now to the outer wreath frames. And I'm always putting the cut mesh side down so that it doesn't stick up or fray as much. Okay, so let me put this one in and then I'll show you um, the, kind of what this looked like before we started putting pieces in. Um, okay, so one pipe cleaner on each section of the inner rings, and there's six. And then I added um, two pipe cleaners to each of the outer two rings. The reason why I do them again on the double them up is because if you just did them on a single, this is what happens. Like let's say for example, you just wanna not really paying attention and you're just zip tying it. They don't stay, they just slide. So doing two helps them create some stability and they won't move around. Yeah, I think what Teresa was asking is when you do that on the wire wreath frame, mm -hmm. compared to the gray mat, you can't really see the wire wreath frame. Oh. So that's why it's kind of hard for you to, to see it. Gotcha, okay. Something I'll make sure that we, we deal. Okay, I'm going back to my thing. So I did purple and blue. I know we're doing yeah, purple and blue, and now I'm doing green and pink. What we could do is now, since you're not really cutting, right? Yeah. I'll take this off. That and you can do. Does that make it easier for you guys to see? Because I know I was doing white pipe cleaners, and with white, white pipe cleaners, it made it really hard to see. Is that better for you guys to see? Well, let me know what works for you guys. We have somebody from Canada joining us. Her name is Vi. Yeah. Hi, Vi. I think I, I was messaging or we were commenting back and forth. Welcome from Canada. So again, we're just taking each three colors that I've kind of pre-planned out. And this was just my preference. I tried to make it to where, I don't know, they each five colors that I had with the beige, I kind of alternated um, a beige color with a non-beige color. 
or pastel with a beige. So I'm going to stick this one in and it's going to start to get really full. And if you're trying to do this yourself, it might be really hard. I had somebody ask me, um, what suggestions do you have for someone who has arthritis? And I do, but it's not as bad yet. But my suggestion would be just do it in stages. Just start with your inner rings or um, maybe not do as many ruffles. Maybe just do two in each. Or um, I saw somebody who had a really good technique. Oh, but that's the question was, does yours unravel when you cut it? Because her deco mesh seems to unravel. It unravels a lot. The more you play with it, the more it unravels. And I've had people um, say they're going to, they, um, I think it's E6000, it's like a glue spray. You can do that and it kind of helps the fibers maybe stay on a little bit better. But I don't think anyone's come out with anything yet that's 100%. The spray glue might work, but I kind of like not using a spray glue on my wreath because the customer is going to want to play with the ribbon. They're going to want to fluff their um, their deco mesh after they put it in storage for a while. Yeah, plus make sure you have a really sharp fabric cutter, the roller. Yeah, that helps. that's definitely true. If you're cutting it with a pair of scissors, you're going to experience a lot more fraying than you would if you were doing, and that's why I had the gray mat here. It was a rotary cutter for quilting, and you want to make sure you have a really sharp blade. Tony asked if you can use six inch width and cut the 10 or 12 inches long. You could. Um, you wouldn't have it quite as full. Um, you might have to go back in and add a little bit more. Um, let me grab the right color. Add some additional. Yeah, you might want to add some additional fluff in the middle if you find out. Like we did it for the candy cane wreaths and I think for the, um, the Dollar Tree um, hearts, you have to do them with a smaller, you want to do them with a smaller um, deco mesh. It just looks nicer um, because when we're doing different shapes, it got so crazy that the shape was lost in a larger deco mesh width. I know you like having a very full wreath. I love full wreaths. So do customers though. That's what I noticed. I mean, you can keep your costs down by not making it as full. Like I said, I probably could have gotten away with maybe just doing um, two colors. Yeah, but Bet said she just bought she just bought a rotary cutter, so she'll, she'll try it with that. Yeah, make sure you get a really good cutting mat. You can get them at Walmart um, for about half the size that I had. Um, and it'll have all your measurements. And I think it goes up to 16 inches. So that's yeah. perfectly fine and it's self-healing so you won't be able you know you're not going to cut all the way through your surface a tip i have is <clears throat> make sure when you're <clears throat> trying to find my other one when you're doing your cut that um you mix it up don't constantly like cut between the one and the on 10 the inch line, yeah. yeah on the same line mix it up do like two and 11 um, three and 12 Sometimes I just put mine right in the middle and go 10 and, 10 and 20. And then you don't have to really cut super, super hard if you have a really good sharp blade. So I'm liking the way this is looking. And I just did green and yellow and I did pink and blue. Okay. So as you guys can see, I've gone almost halfway around so I'm just doing the outer side and this is what it looks like for now. We're going to come back and we're going to add some really pretty spring ribbon. And during my pre-planning stage today, trying to figure out, oh my God, what I had three different choices for Easter wreath, a, a really old vintage sign again from Jane's front door decor. Um, but I would have wanted to do more darker, darker colors. Um, or I could have done one of the rabbit heads that is really super popular right now, but I didn't want to tag off of what someone else had already done on a live. So I just thought, you know what? I've had this sign for a while. I have all the colors. Let's go ahead and do these colors. I'm trying to make sure these don't match up. So we are twisting. I'm trying to find my twist. 
And feel free to share this live video. Yeah, guys, share. That's how, um, number one, it builds your own page views because other people will come to your page to watch the video. I did pink and blue, now I'm in purple and yellow. Huh? Yes, Case. Bubba asks, were you scared no one was buying when you first started on Etsy? Yeah, I really was. Because where I live out in the high desert, um, our price points out here aren't aren't where I could totally take a wreath and turn around and sell it for $120. So it was tough trying to gauge. So I tried to figure out what would I want to pay for a wreath. That's how I, did, how I made my basis. What would I pay for the wreath? And at the time it was like Halloween, moving into Christmas, and you go to Costco, and Costco has those really nice, super huge wreaths for like 40 bucks, and I'm thinking, okay, but if I add more elements to mine, that's justification why people might wanna pay more. Um, but once you start off, you'll find out that your friends and family, that's where it started first. I started listing them on my Facebook page, and my friends started picking them up and they started buying them and then they started special requesting and saying oh can you do a wreath for my front door these are my colors um, and then they told two friends <laughs> yeah and, and so, so on, on and, and so, so on, on and so on um, you're just gonna find that there's gonna be people who don't want to pay more than 40 or 50 dollars for a wreath they're just not and you know what, there's wreath makers out there that are making wreaths for those customers who only want to pay, you know, 20, 30, 40 dollars all day long. Um, if you're building a good quality product, people are going to share it. They're going to post about it on their page. Um, it's really hard in the Etsy store to try to get your customers to leave feedback. That's my biggest thing. Um, when I send them letters with their orders and saying, you know, feedback's important. It helps other people feel confident about um, buying from me. They still won't share. They still won't comment. They're like, thanks for our product, bye. So, just hang in there. I mean, I posted a wreath on my Etsy store. I really did want to sell. But um, I knew how much material cost I put in. I knew how much it was worth. Um, hey, Aaron is watching this. So is Betty, our neighbor. Hey Betty, I was wondering when you're gonna tune in. And then Aaron, where are you from? Aaron, our, our friend Aaron, Aaron Marie. Oh, Aaron on Riverside. Yep. Awesome. So we're building our Easter wreath using six different colors of 10 inch deco mesh, um, except for the beige is more of a poly jute burlap mesh. I purchased all of the deco mesh from Craft Outlet online um, because at the time I was getting ready to make my Easter wreath, people were still selling all their Christmas stuff, so it was really hard for me to find someone who was going to start selling the Easter stuff. So that's where we're at, and we are. Plus, I think uh, Craft Outlet they. It's the premium deco mesh, right? And you can get the cheaper stuff. But that's like, what frays more. Um, yeah. But like as you guys can tell, the blue is a little bit cheaper. I think this one was $3.95 a roll for a 10 yard, which is 30 feet. And then you have the premium that's a little bit thicker. These are nicer. These are $4.95 a roll. And then I think this the beige was $3.95. And they were all 30 feet or 10 yards. So it all works, but there's some of the really cheap deco mesh that really frays bad. So we are almost done. I have after this three more and then we'll start our ribbons. And in the planning stage, what I decided to do, because the sign is a 12 inch aluminum sign, it's going to take up so much of the, um, trying to mix the colors right here. The center. The center that, you know, you pay so much for ribbon and depending upon how many different colors of ribbon you're going to put in here, um, you're going to lose that. It's all going to be hidden underneath the sign. And 
I kind of did a, a little sample demo to try to see did I like the colors with the ribbon um, before I cut everything and got everything ready for you guys and um, I'm like we're gonna spend so much money what did I just do purple I just did that one that one will be last um, Ruth it's not said, gonna be worth it Ruth said your color scheme is awesome she loves it uh -huh. And Wendy Hall says, oh my gosh, I thought it was going to be so hard to do. I was so wrong. It's pretty easy. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. It really is. And um, like I said, there's a bunch of different other techniques that I'm going to try to spread my videos out and teach you guys. Like last time when we did the firefighter wreath, we taught you the poof, putting poof on ruffle or yeah, putting ruffles on top of poofs and then adding the ribbon. This time it's just ruffle. So it's just another technique to kind of put in here. We have 31 people left, 32 people watching now. Very cool. That's better than the first time. I think the first time I only had seven people watching. Yeah. Mostly they were friends and family. Love you. <laughs> I totally do. I love all of you. My goal is to teach you guys how to do this and, um, for us women, this makes a really good um, side income. I'm still in the learning phase, so I'm trying to figure out um, number one, pricing. Number two, how many wreaths should you make for each season? Um, when should you make them? You know, when should you start making? What should you be making right now? Um, a friend of mine gave me really good advice. She said, follow the retail stores. Whatever the retail stores are putting out, that's the kind of wreaths that you're supposed to be making. And I know Valentine's Day is out right now, but if you guys are making Valentine's Day wreaths and you're shipping them, uh, the cheapest shipping method will be UPS ground. And for me, the most it's ever cost me to send a wreath to somebody has been about $23, and that's to go from California all the way to Maine. So... Um, you know, customers are kind of, oh, I'm not really sure I want to spend that kind of money, but it takes about seven days. So knowing when Valentine's Day is, you're going to want to make sure you get those out there. I know I'm missing one. One, two. Heron said it's gorgeous. I love that you don't skip on material. No, I don't. It's kind of hard to skimp on material and tell a customer, hey, I want to charge you $70 for a wreath. And Teresa, that's beautiful. Thank you. Okay, this is the last one. I found out where it is. And look, sometimes if you're not paying attention and you're talking like I am, you can't figure it out. But you can kind of go underneath each wreath and you can see right here is my missing item. Because I was kind of mixing them up so the colors didn't, they weren't side by side. Wendy Hall asked, class plus another 50 for material how much should all of your material cost it depends on what you're making it um, you know I try to put out a good quality product but I have a really hard time um, if my material costs are 40 or 50 dollars you guys are gonna have to charge you know it depends on whatever your hourly rate is whatever you want to charge yourself an hourly rate if it's ten dollars an hour and your material costs are you know Here's all that deco mesh. Um, Ten dollars an hour on top of that. You know that's fifty-five, sixty dollars. Um, you'll you'll be able to get it, no problem. Um, but if it's going to take you three hours to make the wreath at ten dollars an hour, forty-five dollars in material cost, then your wreath. You know, in order for you to make some money off of that, and not just turn around and replace your material cost and go out and buy more material, and you're not really making any money off of it. Once you get the last one in, Teresa asked if you could zoom in and show the back. Absolutely. Okay. And if you guys look, okay, here is the front, and I'll show you the back. I don't even really have to go back in and fluff. You can't really even see. Well, you can kind of see the reframe, but it's the middle. Because right here it's kind of thin. But that's where our slide's going to go. Yep. So here is the back. And that's what the back looks like. Yep. You Good. can take a screenshot even if you want to. Yep. Okay.
Okay, she got it. Awesome. So, you can see we got about a 14 inch wreath frame. We we'll probably put about four inches on either side. I'm guessing without having a measuring tape here, it's about 24, maybe 25 inches in diameter. And it is about six inches tall. At least, yeah. Yeah. But when you go to put this in the box, you can get it to smush pretty good. So that's a way to save on shipping costs is you want to, your customers are going to expect it to kind of be packed pretty well so it doesn't move around in the box. I'm, I'm not really adding anything that's going to damage the deco mesh. So I can pack this pretty good and save on my shipping costs. So right now I package most of mine in a 24 by 4 by 24 inch box. So 24 on the sides and then four inches high and I can get this down really good. Um, like I said, most expensive about $23 to ship. Um, if you go up in size to a six or eight inch, it goes to like $60 or $90. So that's why you want to try to get them in the smallest box possible. Teresa asked if it, did you loop the wire on two? I yes. Think um, let me find, it's right here. I looped it on two. So I'm trying to show you like this, every two. So the outer ones is the very far outer one. And then the third one in from the middle are your outer ties. And then the inner ties is the very first one on the inside attached to the second one. Got it. Yep, so it's I one and two and then three and four. Yep, and you're counting know. from the outside. Okay, good question. Okay, so that is our base and the, the um, ribbon choices that we picked um, because we picked a bunch of different colors. We decided we were gonna go with a two and a half inch chevron which had the blue, the green, and the purple which really plays off that sign really nice. And then I like this color because it reminds me of carrots. So rabbits and carrots. So this is a one and a half inch. Um, polka dot? Polka dot. Yeah, they're all wired. I only use wired ribbon because they're easier um, to work with. They look nicer. The customers can rearrange and maneuver them. And if you have to smash them, you can just re-fluff them back up. Um, this was from Craft Outlet. Um, and I think you got Two and a half inch is the, the width, and it's 10 yards. And then the one and a half inch, where do we get it, Kaylee? Which one? The orange. We got it from Craft Outlet as well, or Michael's. We got this Michael's. from Michael's today. So Michael's, oh my word. Oh, I have it right here. All their Easter stuff was. Orange <coughs> is 12 inches long, it's from Michael's. And yeah, 12 it, inches. And it costs $5 for four yards. Yeah, it's, it came in four yard bundles. So we're gonna be doing just the outer ring. So you're gonna need 12, um, 12 inch pieces. That's what I've cut each of these ribbons to. So 12 of these and 12 of these. Like I said, it you could put them on the inside, but when we put our sign in, as you guys can see on the inner circle, why would you waste your ribbon to stick it underneath the sign? You, it, you know, it's not going to benefit the customer and it's not going to benefit you. So we're just going to focus on the outside. And then we'll add our sign when we're done with the ribbon. We have 63 people watching currently. Awesome. Yeah. Where are you guys from? The ones that are watching. The ones you just added. <laughs> yeah. So when I cut each of my ribbon strips down to 12 inch pieces, so 12 for the two and a half and then 12 with the one and a half, um, you're going to dovetail each of your cuts. So I saved two to demo, and the rest of them I already pre-cut to save you guys time so you don't have to watch me cut. Lord knows how many ribbons. Um, so you're gonna shortcut um, to do it the beginner way. Just take your ribbon, you're gonna fold it in half. So the wire side's here, fold side's here. And you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut from the folded side to the wire side. Just straight up to the point. As you guys can see, it makes a gorgeous dovetail. So you have Judy from Mississippi. Uh huh. Sherry is from Texas. Jane is from Alabama. And Janet from Easley, South Carolina. 
Welcome everybody, welcome to my kitchen. Um, people ask me, well, don't you have a designated craft room? I think I call it a craft storage room. So it's where I organize all my supplies and if I was to do live video, number one in there, the workspace is like your standard desktop, so it's probably only three feet high. I'm in my 50s to bend over on a table and try to do a work for you. I like my kitchen countertop height. Maybe I just need to get a desk um, that's countertop height, but I like this space. And in my home, the very first thing that our company does when they come in is we all congregate in the kitchen. So you guys are my friends and my family, so I wanted to invite you in on my kitchen, just like I would if you showed up at my front door and said, hey, look, we're making wreaths today. So I'm putting the smaller ribbon on top of the larger ribbon, and I'm gonna fold it in half just so we can figure out where is half and crease it. So pretty side on the inside, ugly side on the outside, fold it in half. So it should look like when you're a little kid, little birds that fly. So it's easy for you to find the middle. We have a Jessica from Missouri. Welcome Jessica from Missouri. Bessie from North Carolina. Bessie from North Carolina. Linda is from Kentucky. Wanda is from North Carolina. Holy. Josie is from Kyle, Texas. April Turner from North Carolina. Donna from Pennsylvania. Wow. Kyleen from Buffalo, New York. Uh, Kim from Tonawanda, New York. Judy is from West, West Texas. Wow. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Just like you're coming into my kitchen. Come on in. Georgia, oh. Georgia started, you said you started to say something about Michael's and their Easter stuff. Oh. <laughs> You know, you have a really good husband when he asks you on date night if you want to go to Hobby Lobby and go look around or Michael's. I walked into Michael's today and I was like, snapping pictures, snapping pictures, got to get ideas, I'm trying to figure out, okay, none of their stuff's on sale right now, but I'm going to have a shopping awesome. spree there. So I told my family, my birthday's coming up in March, um, Michael's gift card, Hobby Lobby gift card. I know that family hates doing that, but... When you're a crafter, that's that's what works. So what I'm doing now on the outside, just really quick for those of you that are watching, I've taken my two and a half inch, putting my one and a half inch on half on top. I'm folding it in half to determine the middle, pretty side in, folding it, and then I'm just pinching it together or folding it together so that it's like in a nice cute bow tie. And I'm sticking those on every single one of the outside 12 pipe cleaners that I have. And you can see they're kind of, they're tucked in here, but you can see them. So we're sticking these just on the outside because we know the inside will be covered with our amazing sign. So what questions do you guys have why I just keep tying ribbon in here? Can we get a re Yeah. And it is probably a recording. If you can scroll through the video or there's not a big red live button, then yep. it's the recording and we will get things back to your comments as soon as possible. Exactly. Yep. So if you have the live button in the upper right hand corner of your video, upper left. Upper left. We are live. So you guys can talk to me, you can ask me questions, you can let me know when you're there. If you don't have a live button, you're watching the recorded replay, which in Facebook's um, layout, I've done it so many times. So I've gone in and commented on people's, um, what I thought was their live and it was just the replay. So I was like, why aren't they answering my questions? I have all these, like, where'd you get your ribbon from? Then I was like, oh, wait. But Teresa asked if you're tying the ribbon. So you're not really tying it, you're, but you're tying it into the... I'm tying it into the actual... Can you zoom in on that, Steve? To the same Chanel stems that you yeah, use I'm not for... Untiring, I'm not untying the, sh the pipe cleaners that I had that I tied the deco mesh in. Yeah, I'm just go. taking that and actually going right on top of where I tied that and adding my ribbon. Got it. So, I'm digging to find my other one, which is right here. So... I already have it prepped and open. That's exactly where I'm going to stick the next um, two. And we played around with a bunch of different color combinations of ribbon that I had, but we really, really liked these ones. These are our favorite. 
helps keep costs down too because there's some people put like four <laughs> different um, ribbons in there on top of all their deco mesh on top of their sign and they'll add some crazy picks in there so gonna... Diana asked what size did you cut and what method did you do so uh, for the deco mesh or the ribbon I would just say for everything so the deco mesh is deco mesh inches. is 10 inches wide um, cut, cut 12. 12 inch pieces for all of my colors blue yellow purple pink green and then the beige and then the ribbon and then the ribbon um, both two and a half and the one and a half are cut to 12 inches as well and then we just add them into each pipe cleaner and I just built little cheat sheets like this that tell me what my color combos were so it's all green beige pink blue beige purple so that I wasn't mixing my my colors up. Bessie asked, do you use a pro bow for your bows? Um, my husband was nice enough to buy me one for Christmas, but I haven't mastered how to do it yet. So I still do the bow dabra because I like that. It's really fast. Um, I just have to sit down and watch a bunch of tutorials, but I would love it because the bows come out amazing. But we'll do the pro bow or not. Yeah. No, bow dabber tonight. Because Kayla and I were talking whether or not this needed an actual bow, and she suggested um, let's add some burlap, a burlap bow to it with some of the colors. So you'll see us do that. So again, folding them in half to get to the middle, and then adding them just to the outside um, pipe cleaners. Yeah, right now we're at 94 people live. Awesome guys share this video. It really does wonders for your Facebook page it generates um, Now that thought that Facebook's really messed up the, their algorithm. It's really hurt crafters because I found out That even if you have just say a hundred followers Facebook right now is only allowing 10% of your people your followers or your likers to see what you're posting so you're missing all those potential people coming to your page looking at your stuff. So share. Because then it really throws off their algorithms and they go, wow, this must be a real person and not a robot. Sarah asked if you can show the bow jabba, but I think you're going to use it in a little bit, right? I am. Yeah. Once we get the ribbons done and the sign put in, we will do the bow. And I'll show you how we do a bow. Um, I also have some fun picks that I found at the Dollar Tree that um, we were playing with those two deciding, should we put those in, should we not? I actually like them, so I think we're gonna throw those in. Um, I found them at the Dollar Tree and I'll show you what those look like. They're just cute little um, styrofoam or foam-like um, Easter eggs, colored Easter eggs in these bright um, colors. Diana asked, is that the ruffle method? This is the ruffle method. The scrunch method, the bow tie method, yep. and I've done three colors in each pipe cleaner. So there's 12 on the outside. This was not a work frame wreath. This was a Dollar Tree um, wreath frame because someone wanted to see me put a wreath together just using. Because sometimes you can't find work wreath frames, yep. or those are kind of expensive, like. Right now with Hobby Lobby not putting their Easter stuff on sale until Monday, because it's all new now. I dropped all my ribbon. Oh. And you're going to have to tell people price. that you can actually order uh, a, a full box of, um, mm -hmm. what, 24 wreath frames? Yeah, if you Dollar go to Dollar Tree, because it blew some ladies in mind when I walked into Dollar Tree and I'm like, yeah, I'm here to pick up my order. And she's like, what do you mean? You can order stuff from Dollar Tree? And I was like, yeah. She's like, hmm. So that was a tip from Nick Credico said Nick Seasonal Decor. So he was the one that told me, hey, go to Dollar Tree. You know, a dollar wreath frame. Look, dollar. And then whatever our, our deco meshes cost. So I'll try to show, if you want to zoom in, I'll show you what we're doing again. So we're just taking the fat chevron and adding the polka dot to the top, folding it in half, pretty side inside. Hold on. Can we show the wreath wire frame? Bessie Brooks is 
I'm wondering um, where the two wires go. The two, the pipe cleaners? Okay, sure, I'll show you. I keep looking, oh, here's the wire wreath frame. So this is what we started with. So this is what you can buy at the Dollar Tree online. They're a dollar for a wreath frame and they sell them by the case, so it's by 24. You can't walk in and get these. I haven't seen any of these this year in the Dollar Tree. These came out um, last year, and I had a whole bunch of them, but then I ran out, and I was like, man, I wish I still had the Dollar Tree wreath rings, because you can make your own using pipe cleaners or Chanel stems, um, wiring down in each of the six centers, um, so it's usually one on the inside, one on the inside, and then two on the outside. Yeah, tagging, tying together number one and number two, and then you go around the outside and put them in between where you've put each one of your Chanel stems, and add two. If you put them next to the wire, and I'm sliding them around, by the time you put your other one next to the wire, they're too close together. So space them based on where you put your middle one. So you'll have six on the inside, and twelve on the outside. So for now, this one. Huh? For this one. For this one, yeah. Some people prefer wire work frames. I don't know if my if I want different dimensions, like I want to do, oh, go crazy and go 24 inch. Um, then you go get a 24 inch regular four, um, <clears throat> I guess it's got four wires that are all welded together. Yeah. And right. some other manufacturers have different sections. Like I think Hobby Lobby has like a nine section, right? Eight or nine yeah, sections. Yeah, their work frames different. are different. The larger the work frame, the more sections. Yeah, like somebody questioned me on the work frame that um, I did on my firefighter wreath. They were like, how come it only has 17? And I'm like, I don't know. That's just when I counted it, that's what there was. So when I was, I'm just making sure I haven't forgot any. Because we cut extra ribbon just to make sure. Because I was doing some samples on a wreath frame to make sure I really liked what it looked like. So I think I have them all. And yes, our cats are coming by from time to time to say hi. Yeah, hopefully <laughs> they won't jump up on the counter. Last time we put them away, but we couldn't capture them before they all went live. Okay, so that is our ribbon on the outside. And what I'm gonna do really quick is because our sign is going to take up the middle section, um, I'm gonna take my ribbons and I'm gonna just kind of move them around. I'll show you what we did last time. Try to do it right here. Donna asked if you start with the mesh on the inside first or the outside? Um, I prefer the inside and then work to the outside, but it's whatever your preference is. It's just easier for me to find the pipe cleaners if I start on the inside, because they'll start to overlap the outside ones. If you did the outside ones, I think it'd be harder to find the inner ones. So on each one of my ribbons, I'm going to take and pull the orange in one direction and the chevron in another. And rather than do it like this, because that kind of looks wonky to me, I'm going to do them in the opposite direction. And if you just take your fingers and run them through, your ribbon, it puts such a nice curl in it. Of course, now that the bigger chevron isn't working, but we're gonna go around and do that to each one of our ties on the outside. After you put the sign on? Um, no, I'm doing it now, because the sign's gonna be in the middle, so it's gonna be easier. And then when I'm doing them side by side, because I know I have this one, the chevron on the bottom and the orange on the top. I'm gonna to go orange on the bottom on this side and then put my chevron on top so that they kind of coordinate, look better together. Yes, yeah. Awesome guys, share this video. Watch what it'll do to your Facebook likes. Patricia asked, where did you get the sign? The sign, jeans, front door, decor. She, I found her. On Amazon. No, I didn't find her oh, on Amazon. Right. Yeah, I found her on Etsy. Yep. And at the time I was doing Christmas wreaths and she had the most incredible, like I'm really into the vintage look. Um, she had the most incredible like 
it was in Noel Farms Christmas truck and the red pickup truck was really popular this year um, so I bought that almost every single wreath that I've made with Jane's signs I've sold no problem um, because people probably don't know where to look for them so you can find her on Etsy it's Jane's with an apostrophe J-A-N-E-S um, front door decor and her prices are amazing her shipping is crazy um, crazy good because she doesn't charge you a ton of money for shipping she gets it out to you really quick I think when I first found her I was doing a craft show my first craft show up in the mountains during Christmas time um, so I was kind of a little apprehensive I'm like I should probably take some Christmas stuff up to the mountains for Christmas this is a Christmas is a holiday home tour kind of craft slash craft show so that's what we had decided to do and I explained Jane I'm in a I'm in a bind I need to kind of hurry and get the sign shipped out she got them shipped to me in enough time that I was able to create my wreaths and get them out and um, she also posts them on her Facebook page from time to time so between Michael's Hobby Lobby Joann's and Jane's I'm gonna be broke they just come out with the most amazing stuff what questions do you guys have anything Kaylee any questions out there so remember 14 inch work frame or not work frame 14 inch wreath frame from um, Dollar Tree deco mesh 10 inch deco mesh all from craft outlet um, my sign from Joann's or chains front door decor um, some of my ribbon like the polka dotted ribbon I got from Michaels today um, and then the chevron and the yellow checkered are from craft outlet as well yeah the chevron ribbon was craft outlet so hopefully I'm giving you guys some good tips to try to save some money because I know on a crafter side of things um, it can get expensive paying for materials and then you have your customers going I don't want to pay that much money for your wreath. I'll give you 20 for that. You're like, uh, my sign alone, uh, you know, my ribbon, just the ribbon cost. Once you factor all that in, no, it's not cheap to do these wreaths now. And don't let people cheapen you out and try to get you to make those cheap ribbon or wreaths. What I have found is if I make them for a bunch of different price points like for the customer who can't afford you know 55 or 60 dollars for a wreath um, I make a couple 30 or 35 dollar ones it won't be this thick or this elaborate but I still try to keep the integrity of my quality you know um, I might not do as many ribbons or as many picks or I try to find deals wherever I can getting stuff on clearance. Like I saved a ton of money at Christmas time buying the red deco mesh and the white deco mesh and the green deco mesh when they were 80% off. Because if you think about it, that's your St. Patrick's Day, your Valentine's Day, um, probably Mother's Day, spring race. So now when you're seeing these clearance um, sales, because I know when I was in Michael's today, they still had Christmas ribbon on sale for 80% off. Lisa, Lisa from Albany, New York says you're doing a great job. Uh -huh. And then Diana asked how many rolls of each color did you use? Um, okay, I'll show you. So you had five colors, right? I have six colors. Six colors. But when I cut my 18 pieces of the beige, this is how much I had left off of a 10 yard or 30 foot roll. So I probably will not have enough to duplicate this. So if you're thinking how much should I charge for the customer, you're going to want to charge a full roll for this because if you were to duplicate it and make it another roll, you're not going to have enough. You have to go out and buy another one. Um, but as you can tell, the pink, you guys can see how much is left. Um, I only use seven 12-inch pieces of the 10-inch deco mask. So probably just a third of it. Yeah, not even, yeah, 12 inches. So I used seven feet, and this is 30 feet of deco mesh so I can easily make 
probably a total three. of three. Yeah. I would probably just do two to be on the safe side, just in case your cuts are not exactly perfect. And then I did purple, and then this is um, white, um, yellow, yellow with white, yeah. and then I have the blue. So these were the color choices I picked. And I got them because I wanted springy colors. And at the time I bought them from Craft Outlet, none of the other <coughs> retail stores were selling their, their Easter or spring stuff. And Cheryl asked if you only put the colors on the top ring. No, you put them on both. Uh, you put the colors the on the top. Mesh? Yeah, all the, the colors. The deco mesh, I did all the way around, inside and outside rings. The ribbon, just on the outside. Right. And the reason why I did um, the inner rings is to give my sign a base so that it wasn't all hollow in the middle. Okay. Um, and I'll show you how we're going to attach the signs. So these are all my ribbon tails. So as you guys can see, this is what it looks like for now. And it's not really fraying that much. I find that if you put your deco mesh face down, um, it doesn't really fray as much as if you were to do it face up like you have these little funky pieces here there's okay a, there's a carolyn watching from myrtle mississippi hi carol um okay so now we're taking the sign that i ordered from jane's front door decor um she's really nice when you order your signs you can order them with no holes if you want to you know maybe you want to put your holes different places um she can do left and right or she can do top and bottom and I think she does ones where you can do all four. Um, so I just order mine without, and then I use a, a hole punch, like a metal hole punch that I ordered off of Amazon, and I punched holes where I wanted them. So I have two Chanel stems that are gonna hold my sign. It's not gonna rotate like this because it's gonna sit on that bed of deco mesh. And then I touch my business card with a couple dabs of hot glue so if your customer doesn't remember where they got their wreath from it's on the back of your wreath so it's on the back of the sign so now we're going to attach the sign so because i've just twist tied this on with chanel stems i'm just going to i'm just going to take my chanel stems and i'm going to put them in the middle i'm going to try to do it one at a time but if i put my hand through you guys have seen me do this on the other one i'm going to grab my chanel stems and I'll show you how I do it once I get it in here. I'm trying to get it. Pam says hi from Pennsylvania. Hi Pam from Pennsylvania. We have family there. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this over so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Can you zoom in, Steve? Yep. So here's my Chanel stem from the sign on one end. And I've positioned it to where I have the center weld on each side. So I'm gonna take my pipe cleaner. I'm gonna go around the second inner ring. I'm gonna to try to do this, even though it's kind of funky. And then around the, what you call it, the top, the inner ring, just on the outside. And just for now, I'm gonna lightly twist them together just a couple times, because I wanna make sure my sign's centered before I go ahead and really pull it down. So, same thing taking my Chanel stems, bringing it in to the inside part of my wreath, and I'm finding my weld where I did it on that side because that kind of helps me determine if I'm in the right spot. Going the second inside ring, I'm trying to do this so you guys can see it. Yeah, it. Okay, and then the, um, the outer ring, and I'm twisting. And once I get these to where I want them to be, let me look first before I show you guys. It's almost perfect. That's kind of where we're at. Does that look straight to you guys? Give me some hearts, give me some thumbs up. Does that look centered? Yeah, it looks like it needs to go down a little bit to the... To the bottom? To, to your left, to the but down a little bit. Down here? Yeah, and then to the left a little bit. This way? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Does that look good, Pretty guys? Pretty close right there, yep. Okay. So now I'm gonna take it and flip it over and I am going to tighten those two pipe cleaners. Pamela asked how much are your wreaths to purchase? This one, Kaylee and I actually went through and did all of our material costs considering 
Um, I know some people say charge the customer the full roll, but if that was the case, just to go out and buy all of the materials just to make one wreath, if you didn't have any of this on your, um, like in your inventory, inventory. Yep. it will cost you about 78 bucks for materials. But here's your justification. This is my justification. Everyone might be different. Because if you think about that, $78 plus your labor, labor rate, uh, say you do $20 an hour, $25 an hour, you're already into a $100 wreath. But I have enough to make three more using my pastels. Um, not so much on my ribbon. Um, so I would just have to buy a couple extra rolls of the poly jute. And these are only five bucks a roll. So, and I get 30 feet. So, um, this one would probably go between 70 and 75. But I'm not done. You can be done at this particular stage. And I'm just cutting off my Chanel stems. So once I twist these back on, now that I know where they're gonna go, I'm gonna put them on there like four or five, six times, twist them. And then I'm gonna take my wire cutters and I'm gonna cut that off. And you almost don't need to worry about it because your wreath frame's kind of dome shape like this. It's got a dome. So the customer's really only gonna be attaching it to the outer ring. But if the customer's handling it, I don't want that sharp Chanel stem there. So I'm just gonna take it and twist it on the inside. So this is what it looks like on the inside. And this is our wreath on the outside. So you can take your deco mesh just kind of pull up those little edges that are kind of, I don't know, they just don't look that good to me. So I'm just pulling these up so we have some color all the way around. And I like to take my corners of my deco mesh and tuck them in because all of us who have used deco mesh, it frays like crazy. So I'm just pulling this up and then tucking my ends back. Any other questions you guys have right now? Nope, I think that's it. Okay. Kind of said thank you. Awesome. Okay, and I'm gonna pull this purple up. And somebody asked if it was the the scrumster, the ruffle technique, and yes, it is. Scrunchies. Ruffle. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had a piece. I can cut a piece and show you how to do it. But yeah, where you just walk your fingers through it, and make little bow ties. Um, I did three per tie. So, and as you guys can tell, you're gonna constantly fluff your ruffles because when you pick up your wreath and, and attach your slime, your, your outside bows are gonna get all kind of ruffled. And then, I will show you really quick. Um, we had looked at a couple different options for what do you do, because um, I like, besides just cutting off my pipe cleaners and leaving it like that, which you could do, um, we had decided that we were going to add a little bit of um, a pastel ribbon to them. And so what we picked up, I'm trying to make sure, we had decided that we were going to do this blue with lace that I got at Michael's today. Um, and this was three yards. So cutting it to 12, 12 inch pieces, 12 all the way around. Um, I was able to get 12 out of each um, roll of ribbon. Again, it's not on sale, so just give it a, like probably next week it'll be on sale. But what I'm gonna do, just to kind of fill that void in between the gaps is, and I love this ribbon, it was so pretty. It just didn't kind of look good with the sign. But I'm gonna take them, fold it in half, so my tails touch and I have a loop. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna tie these loops on each of the insides. It's probably a four inch loop bent in half, right? Yeah, I took my cutting board. I'm guessing probably four inches. going in half, that's six. Yeah, maybe maybe a little longer. Someone asked if you can show them how to scrunch your mesh. Scrunch my mesh? Sure. I have a couple of these. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like once we put this in. And remember, we're cutting those little Chanel stems off so let me show you what this looks like. You guys might not like it, but 
I don't know, just it added something that was missing. So this is kind of what it'll look like on each one of the ties. Yep. Okay. So let me do another one of these and then I'll show you how we do the scrunchy technique real quick because Kaylee's cutting me or getting some mesh for me. So I'm back at my little scrunchies and I'm going back in each one of my ribbon ties and tying that in because I have a lot of Chanel stem left. So you guys can see I have quite a bit. I'm just putting little loops in there. It just gives it something instead of just looking like, I don't know, like the inside of a flower. It just looks funky. Because these were all our ribbon choice cuts. And I was trying to figure out what ribbon choices we were going to make. So one more. And then I'll show you how to do the scrunch. And then I'll go around and do the rest. And then we're just going to add one more little piece to our wreath before we're done. Oh, and then the bow. But the bow will go quick. Because we demoed whether or not we wanted to put the bow on it. I'm like, let me, let me run that through and see if it looks good. So some people go, how do you get your idea? I started with the sign. And then I went with the ribbon choices. A lot of times I'll go through Pinterest. Sorry, I was going to do one more. Um, I go through Pinterest a lot. And I like will Google Easter wreaths. And I'll just look at the color combinations other people have chosen. And kind of their technique. That's how a lot of my custom orders come through. Customers will send me their Pinterest pictures and go, can you make this? Which is, sure, but it's not going to look exactly like that. Because I didn't make that wreath. But I can get as close as I can. So as you guys can see, this is what it's looking like on the outside, just to kind of finish it. Because when a customer's hanging that on the door, I mean, it looks great from the front, but from the side or the other side, or if they hang it above their mantle or above their kitchen, you kind of want to finish that look on the outside. So. Hey, your niece Shannon actually said, I need one for every holiday. <laughs> Thanks, Shannon. <laughs> My Etsy page, which Kaylee's painting. Okay, really quick. For those people who wanted to do the ruffle technique, this was already pre-ruffled. This was my sample once to see if I like the colors. 10 inch mesh, I'm doing the burlap in the middle, and then this was the pink. Cut to 12 inches. 12 inches, 10 inch deco mesh, and you just walk your fingers through it. So you're just walking your fingers until you have a bow tie. And I leave my deco mesh flat. I keep them all on the same side and then I just match this up with my other one and I continue to walk it as best to the middle as I can. So now I have two. So because I wanted three, I'm going to do the same thing. Go to the middle, walk it. Of course yours isn't going to look like this. So we're going to take it and then we add it to it's not that way of cleaner. That was my why you don't you one, why you do two. I'm going to take it, lay it, um, ruffle side down, put it between your pipe cleaner, and twist it on there two times. At least two, yeah. Yep. And I tell people, they're like, what do you mean twist? How do you, how do you position your deco mesh in there? Um, I explained to somebody... Think of like putting your bread twist ties on a loaf of bread. You have your plastic and you want to, um, you're going to just twist your bread twist ties on. So I'm going to go through and do this pretty quick. Who? Hey, Nick is on. Nick, are you serious? Are you here? You're in Texas at a craft fair that I'm envious I wanted to go to. Nick is my my mentor. I watched him because I was doing wreaths for a long time, just for my house, just for um, my stuff, and I didn't realize that there were so many different materials out there and ways that you could um, create wreaths using deco mesh, using burlap, and I was like, oh my god, 
I want to do that too. So we're, remember, we're just doing the little loops and we're putting these inside each of our ribbons and fluffing them. And I'm going to go back and just re-fluff everything again, but let me get these in so you guys can see. Nick Pritica says both you and the wreath are looking beautiful. Thank you. If you guys have not joined Nick's Seasonal Decor, please do. The mound's amazing. At 19, oh man, I only wish I was 19 at where he is now. The guy's is just great. He walks you through the most amazing, beautiful race. One day I hope that I'm half as good as he is. So find him at Nick's Seasonal Decor. Mm -hmm. Kaylee's linking his or pinning his page to mine so you guys can find him. Our goal is... Feel free to share. Yeah, share. Share Nick's page too. I know we're trying to get him to 100,000 followers, so he's pretty close. So These are people that are going to help you become successful at what you do. And Nick does have a private group that you can join. And if you head on over to his page, he can fill you in on all that. Yep. And he yes, great tutorials. Yeah, I signed up. That was the very first thing I did. I'm there. So I'm almost done. Nick Predicos just shared your video. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm serious. I was going to beg Nick. Nick, would you mind just sharing my <laughs> my video? Blow my Facebook feed up. Okay. Thank you, Nick, for doing that. Okay. We have three more to go, even though I have plenty more cut. Originally, I was going to do all four. Happy birthday to Ruby Mackey. It is her birthday today. Happy birthday, Ruby. Where are you from? The one good tip that you'll always learn from Nick, fluff your bows. Run your fingers through your bows. Customers, if you're purchasing wreaths from your clients or your crafters, when they ship them to you, fluff your bows. Okay, so. <clears throat> I'll pick it up and show everybody? Yeah, I will. Okay, keep in mind I haven't quite fluffed every single bow yet. But this is what it looks like. We're kind of going around the outside. We added these little bow tail um, pieces along with our ribbon tails. Um, we're kind of fluffing them out. And then one last element before we do the bow really quick is... Ruby's in Canada, Cape Breton Island. Really? Well, happy birthday to you all the way up in Canada. Um, I went to Dollar Tree today and I was looking for mesh tea ribbon, which I was unable to find, but I actually found these. These are little, they're okay. called egg picks. Um, this one came in a pack of five and then I liked the little smaller ones. So they have ones with polka dots and then they have ones that are just all solid glitter. And then what I thought would look cute, you guys can tell me yay or nay, is if we took these and I cut the stems down quite a bit. I actually launched them all over my living room when I cut them because they shot off my um, cutter. Um, just kind of gluing these in. What do you guys think? Thumbs up if you think yay. Yeah, um, those look good. You guys think we should do that? Yeah. Okay, because I have exactly um, 12 of them. You're at 289 views. Awesome, 289. Yep. And okay. Nick, Nick just said, let's reach 300 viewers. That would be so awesome. Okay. All right. Yes, yeah, so you can do different colors, right? Yeah, we have one, two, three, four, five. Maybe we'll go every other one because they're all a little bit different. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to cut them down because Lord knows you can't really stick that in your wreath. I'm going to cut them down to about an inch. I'll give it maybe two. No, one an inch. Okay. So because I'm not that really strong, and I'll go pick that up later. I'm gonna cut all these down 
Do you have somebody from Australia? Do you want me to cut them for you, huh? No. Um, who is it from Australia, Kaylee? Her name is Teresa Green. Hi, Teresa from Australia. Saturday morning. Is it really Saturday morning in Australia? Okay. I think so. Is it Saturday morning? I would. No, I'm asking. That's why I do it in my kitchen. Because <laughs> it's a tile floor. <laughs> so I can go pick everything back up. And like I said, I do it in my kitchen because I want to welcome you into my home. And the countertop works. So I'm not bending over. So I have my glue gun already. Um, Nick usually does the glue skillet. And normally I do glue skillet. But with these being so small, I'm afraid that I might get a little too close to the glue and burn my hand. So I have parchment paper and my glue gun. Robin said it's Saturday afternoon at 1.30. My word. In the morning? In no, 1.30 in the, in the afternoon. In the afternoon. Wow. So I'm going to liberally stick these along. And I'm going to tuck these in to the center of my picks. Yeah, you have 310 viewers. Awesome. Thank you, Nick. So I'm just taking them, putting my little blob of glue and I guess what it's going to adhere to is all of the the center ribbon so could use a glue skillet I know I told Nick I could probably use the glue skillet but um, I'm just afraid sometimes when I get my picks cut a little too short um, that I'm gonna burn myself and yes the eggs are I believe styrofoam painted yeah they're like stuck on little wood, wood dowels so I'm taking these as you guys can see, I'm tucking them in every single one. Yeah, it's pretty. Thank you. So this will go really fast. And as you guys can see, I'm using a generous blob of glue. And I'm tucking it right on top of each of my little bows. The parchment paper works so good. It's like my favorite. And to Lisa Sarah Dillon Burst and asks, is there a way I can get notifications when you guys go live so I don't miss it? I'll add the three hours from Cali to New York. Um, yes, I think. And anyone can jump in like Nick and show me how to do it. But I'm almost positive that if you become a follower of mine, you can see my big blue blob, um, you get notified the minute that you go live usually your followers do and what you want to do is when you click on the like button to like my page or to follow you want to go back into one of those and it says the default setting is just Facebook's default so it would be whenever I posted the videos whenever you're going to get notified in your newsfeed but if you go in there and you click um, first or see first um, no matter what you're doing in your Facebook feed the minute that I go live, you get notified in your news feed. So does anyone have anything different? We have Donna Rowland from Hot Springs, uh, either Arkansas or Arizona, Kathy Cheney from Kentucky. We have Linda Schlosser from New York, or NC, North Carolina. Really? Yes, we do. Yeah. We have awesome. people from Colorado. Oh my word. I know I felt bad. I was trying to figure out a good time to go live. Now I'm just cutting off those Chanel stems that are still poking out. And Nick said yes. Lots of glue and love the eggs. Thanks. Dollar Tree. Never. I never I never knew about Dollar Tree, I think, until I started watching some of Nick's videos. Um, and then I went to Dollar Tree because I was like, I think I was afraid where we live. It's not so nice of a neighborhood. But um, I was thinking, what would a dollar store have? Pam Garrett asks, oops, lost your comment. Can you hold it up so that she can see the center? Absolutely. Uh, let me pull up a couple things here. Hang on real tight. I'm just going through really quick, and let me just cut these Chanel stems before I forget. And then I'll show you how to do a quick bow. And then we are done with this. So remember when we put our ribbons in, we twisted them a good two, three, four, five, six, 
as many times as you think that it would take to put those in there. Um, just twist. So the last thing you want it to do is come undone. But a lot of times what I'll do for the customers that are purchasing the wreath, um, because it's Easter, um, if they want to use this for a different season or maybe they, they found a cuter sign or um, just want a different look for their home, I explained to them that if they flip it over, it's just fastened on there by um, pipe cleaners. So if you want, you can just snip it off, put another sign on. Nick said, great team of helpers, send them my way, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> I envy Nick's helpers, man. He's got tons of helpers. I was like, if I lived in Boston, I'd want to be Nick's helpers. I'd be like, let me cut your ribbons. I'll cut your deco mesh. I'll be your sous chef. <laughs> Oh, admin Kit Kat. Yeah. Husband's reading my comments. My daughter, who is internet tech savvier than I am, is trying to respond to your questions with anything because I gave her a list. Here's all the supplies. Here's where I got them. Um, so if you see anybody that I'm missing, we have. Gotta hold it up real quick. Yeah, Angela? I've got two more and then I'll do it. We have Angela Stone from Texas. Hi, Angela. Sherry from Illinois. Welcome. We have Dolores from Delaware. Donna from Ohio. Julie from Naples, Florida. Wow. Yeah. Welcome, everyone. Do me a favor. Want to blow out your Facebook feeds? Share this video. Because if you're a crafter, other crafters are going to look at your video and they're going to start coming to your page now. And let's show Facebook that we don't need their funky algorithm to determine who sees our feed or who doesn't see our feed. And, okay. This is what it looks like. What do you guys think? Stop there if you guys want, or do you guys want to see me make a bow? What do you guys say? Bow? Thumbs up, bow. It's so lovely. Um, a lot of loves for the bow. Okay. And likes. It's really quick. I can show you guys how to do a bow. I'm not a pro bow expert. But we wanted to see the bow dabble too. Yeah. Um, well, I have it. Everybody says yes, make a bow. Yes, make a bow. Okay. So, this is Lodabra. You can get this at, where do you get this? Hobby Lobby? I think it was $15. Right. Yeah. Take your 40% off coupon. There you go. This is perfect for people who have arthritis because this is your holder. It's like you have an extra set of hands that can hold your bow for you. Um, yep, everybody's saying bow. Bow, bow. Okay, we'll make a bow. Um, so these are where I started on my ribbons. So I'm going to actually make this bow with burlap two and a half inch ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby. I got it during the end of the fall season. So I think I got it 70, 75% off. If you needed it, you guys could still get it at Hobby Lobby um, in their regular ribbon section and it's $9.99, but you can get 40% off. But yeah, right now we're at 45,000 people reached. Awesome, let's keep going. All right, so when I was working out my sample to try to figure out what did I want to show you, how do I do it, because if I was building this wreath from scratch, because this is what people always ask, how do you figure out, um, I'm going back and forth into my craft room and pulling out different elements. Oh, I like this. No, take this all apart. Don't like how that looks. Um, so we really wanted the burlap aspect to be added to this. So that's why we're going to do the burlap wreath. So, um, bow dabber. Awesome device. Because you can do it really quick. Um, you're going to start what I did. Just because I wanted to see if these two elements looked good together, which is why they're pre-cut. Um, normally, I just leave it on the row and just keep going back and forth, which is what I'll show you when I add um, the roll to the bow dabber. Is you're going to want to dovetail, cut your starting pieces, so your tails. Remember, to do that, we fold it, 
and then we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut from the fold to the point or fold to the wire side. And I tell myself this over and over when I'm cutting my ribbons, fold to the edge, fold to the edge, fold to the edge. And when I don't is when I make a, the upside down arrow and I realize I did it the wrong way. So I believe when I had the mat here, this was about eight inches. So I have an eight inch tail and you're gonna take it and you're just gonna kind of pinch it and you're just gonna stick it right in the middle of your bodabra. So look, it holds it for you. So this is your extra set of hands. And then you're gonna take it, and I usually take this and turn it around so I'm not going back and forth. And you're gonna take your loop, this is where you're making your loop, and you're gonna kind of pinch it together. And then on this side, you're gonna twist it over. So it slides in. So you guys are gonna watch me do this a couple times. So again, just cause it's easier for me, I flip it around. Here's my tail. Um, now that it's flipped over, I'm going to scrunch it together. And on this side, I'm flipping it over. So I kind of have it like a little twist. And that twist, sorry, goes between the um, bodabra, just like so. And as you guys can see, it's already working its way into a really cool looking bow. So I have both tails and then here. Um, I watched somebody else do this and it was really cool because they kind of just kept adding different colors and different colors. And I didn't realize that you could do that on a Provo. So I'm going to kind of show you what we're yeah. doing here if you have a bunch of pieces. Um, because I started my tail on this <laughs> side, I'm going to put my tail on this side. Again, eight inches. Kind of scrunch it together. Put it in. Just kind of twist it this way. You want to make sure that you're always working with the ugly side this way so that when you flip side. it, yeah, your pretty side's on the outside. So we're going to take it, twist it, push it back in there. And I try to make sure that it measures the one on the bottom. And now we're back to the ugly side. So we're flipping. We are matching it up with the other one, twisting and flipping. Maggie asked, so you, do you cut pieces for the bow maker? You don't have to. I don't. But it was so incredible watching somebody put them all together using pieces. I was like, I didn't know you could just put them all together in pieces. I thought they all had to stay on this long roll and you just keep going back and forth. But this is one of the nice parts of using um, the Pro Bow, or the Pro Bow, and then also the Bow Dabra is you can incorporate different pieces in your loop so you have different colors. So um, we're just going to do the chevron and the burlap. So I'm going to go back in because right now I have what would be two loops of the chevron and then two loops of the burlap, and I'm going to go back and do the same thing. Add another two burlap and then another two loops on the chevron. So when I'm done, I'll have a four burlap bow um, intermixed with the four chevron bows. And I think that would be good because anything larger than that would just really overpower the wreath. So now I'm doing it on my roll because this is how I would really do it live. Fold to the point, put my tail in there. My tail's here. I'm starting a tail on this side and pushing it down. See, this is where, this is amazing. People with arthritis, you don't have to worry about folding anything. So I fold it, I'm gonna pinch, twist, and put it back in here. And just kind of make sure that my loops are about the same size. If I put my fingers in them, I can gauge that. The more you use it, the more you'll figure it out. There's a couple times I made some really ugly looking bows. So the good thing when you're doing this is if you don't like it, before you tie it all together, you can take it apart and redo it. So we are here. I'm at the end of my two loops. So I'm cutting it. And then I'm gonna dovetail. So again, cut from the fold to the wire, there's your dovetail, and then we're going to add the chevron, which is here, 
we need our dovetail first. So fold, cut from the fold to the point. There's our chevron or our dovetail. Ugly side down, because that's where all the other ones are going. So there's my tail flipping. I'm gonna take it, make sure it's about the same, twist it. And my bows are about the same. So we're back to the ugly side on the inside. That's why we're twisting it. It's because if we just did it like this, we have the pretty side and the outside. So we've got to get that twist in it. So my guess is your loops are not the same size every time. They're pretty close. They're pretty close. You can sit here and just go like this, which is what I do. And as you can tell, they're pretty close. But... They don't have to be perfectly exact, but they have to be close. You could if you really wanted to. You could cut your ribbon down and just do them that way. But I don't know. I go back in and adjust. Sometimes my one tail might be longer than the other. So I can go back in and um, adjust them or cut them if I need to. So Susan Berry said, howdy, first time watching. Hey, Susan. Welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> so there we have it. We have, as you guys can see, I have one, two, three, four loops here. One, two, three, four loops here. And then I have my tails on each side too. So that's the nice thing about that is you can walk away and I'm looking for my pipe cleaners, which I have over here. So I'm gonna do beige because I have my burlap. So now when, there's a way that you can do this and I should have done it beforehand is if you guys can see in between, you can actually take the pipe cleaner and put your pipe cleaner in there so it's already there and just lift it. I kind of forgot that step. So I'm gonna take it. And I want my burlap on the bottom, which means that I have to put this going this way. So I'm going to take this, try not to get it to collapse. I just hold it pretty tight and just twist it so I have my ribbon, voila. Doesn't look like a bow right now, but I'm guessing, should we put it on the top? Yeah, I think the top. The top, you guys think? I don't think the bottom would look that good. I don't know though, what do you think? Top or bottom? Bottom or top, you guys vote. Top likes, bottom loves. This is the top, once we have to fluff it, this is it on the bottom. What do you guys think? What are you getting? More tops, more bottoms. We got one like so far. Like it for the top or love for the bottom? We need a tiebreaker. Bottom, 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 bottom. Oh, yeah. Bottom. Oh, hey, we're going with the bottom. That's about that time. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to take this and we're going to do the same thing like we did with our slime. Yep, we are we'll going to bottom. take this and we are going to feed it in between our mesh. Trying to get it, and I'll show you once I get it in here. There we go. And go, go, go. It's all twisting in here. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. So I have fed it through my deco mesh, kind of exactly the way we did it on our sign. Kind of flip this over which will deflate my bows again again this time when we did our sign we did the inner and the second ring when we're doing the bow i wanted a little bit further down not so much up to the sign i'm doing the outer ring and the third ring and i'm just going to twist it twist it twist it twist it twist it remind me not to forget to cut that off and now we're going to fluff so we are going to start at the very bottom of our bows and pull all your tails down. You're going to fluff your burlaps. You're going to twist your ribbon tails. Still fighting this cold. Pulling all your, and that's a nice thing 
is once you have this secured, you can really pull on your bow. Okay, where are you? And I'm just following where the bows are laying, like where are the tails? Um, sometimes I want the tails kind of puffing up. You've got a lot of people saying I love it with the bow and a lot of people saying I love it without. You know, and that's the beauty of it because I didn't cut it off yet if I absolutely hate it. Maggie asked if you could fluff before you attach the bow. You could, but yeah. when you are flipping it over to do your twist tie, you're going to smash your bow again. And two, Susan and Shelly, who like it without the bow, this is just to teach people a lot of different techniques in one video instead of making a lot of different videos. Absolutely. If you love this wreath, my mom can make you one just like it without a bow. Yep. And there's people who say no on the bow. Again, if you want to keep your costs down, you can you know, opt to not do it. I just thought, you know what? So many people are doing bows. Let me show people how to do it with the bow dabra until I figure out how to use my pro bow. So what I'm doing is I'm just moving my burlaps around the different chevrons and trying to put the chevron in between each one of my bow loops, like so, and fluffing, and pulling down on your, your ribbon, like so. I think once everybody sees it, they'll love it. Yeah. To Brenda, this will become a recorded after if you miss the live stream, and you can scroll through it to the parts that you want to find. And you can still comment, and we will still answer it by text. Absolutely. We're just about done, and then this will be posted for a replay, and then you guys can come back in. You guys are welcome to ask questions. I'll go back through it. I'll ask questions. Um, just don't get mad that I'm not answering them in the light in the replay because I don't I'm not seeing them when you guys are posting them. I just see them at the very end when they're all um, done at the very very end. I am almost finished. Awesome. Okay, so I'm trying to get this one delay differently. It's because the burlap is over here. I'm just following my tails around so that they hang in the same place that I want them to. Cheryl um, says, I never understood why designers add two or three bows. It just seems to cover up all the work. Um, I think a lot of people, when they do that, they're creating a base. And, and so, yeah, they're adding depth so that they're building the, the uh, they're building the wreath up so that they can either support a sign. I, you know, I see that happen a lot. But then you have those customers that just want bows. You know, they want a lot of bows. Um, you want to turn it so you can see the bow? Yep. I'm just fluffing the ones next to it. So that's what it looks like with the bow. And I'm going to go back in and just fluff all these tails back where they need to be. But from flipping it upside down, I'm just smashing it. But before you post this on your Etsy page for sale, Hang it on the wall, do some really good lighting, zoom in on your details that you offered the customer so that they can see, you know, it's not just a sign smashed on some wreaths. You know, show them your your eggs and your the colors of your bows. But that's pretty much it. So this, once I finish fluffing it and I take pictures of it, it'll be on my Etsy store. So Kaylee's got it posted or pinned to the bottom of my feed. Um, do you guys have any questions before I sign off? Everybody says love it. Love it? Awesome. All right. I'm going to try to do another one um, next week, Friday at 5. I call it Friday Live at 5. Um, so you guys will see another voting poll. Um, I think we're going to do a choice between spring or farmhouse. And the farmhouse isn't your traditional wreath. It's going to be a metal frame tire. Okay. Hold it, hold it up. and There you guys go. Bow, no bow. Remember, if you don't like it, you guys can take it off. You just untwist it. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much, Nick, for sharing this video. You're amazing, and have a great weekend, everyone.